Hi YouTube, it's Emma Blois 10 here with a help and advice video on getting better at Yu-Gi-Oh! Now I've actually seen a few of these videos done by bigger Yu-Gi-Tubers around on the yu gi -Tube community and each of them have got different points and opinions and views and advice for how to get better at the game and I thought it was interesting so I thought I'd do my own one because obviously it'd be interesting to see it from a female side of the Yu-Gi-Oh! game and everything and I'm quite happy to share my experiences and advice with you as well so I hope you guys enjoy, okay? Now, getting better at Yu-Gi-Oh! is not an overnight thing and it's definitely not something you can ask a fairy godmother to wave your wand and bam, you're instantly a pro at Yu-Gi-Oh! and all the mistakes and newbie beginnings you have, you know, are like that out the window unfortunately. It's nothing like that. It takes a lot of time, a lot of testing, a lot of experience to become pro, as it were, in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! I think the best advice that I can give to everybody is um the first one first and foremost I would say would be is play a deck that you are most comfortable with. There's nothing wrong with testing other decks and everything, but if you're going to say a big event and you want to do really really well, then play with something that you know inside out and that you're really comfortable with and that you you can basically adjust to your specifications and everything as well. Going to a regionals with a deck that's untested and you don't know how it works, you're quite more than likely bound to make quite a few mistakes, get some rulings wrong and everything and obviously you can mess up big time if you do that. So I think that's the first and foremost one is just play with what you're comfortable with, play with what you like and don't let anybody else dictate to you about that. I think the second one is do a lot of testing, do a lot of dueling. Obviously you gain experience, you gain more skills and you gain more insight into the game from playing it, obviously. Um, now there's two ways I feel that are okay for testing. The first one is online duels, so that's like Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro, Dueling Network and Yu-Gi-Oh! Online and everything. Now they're quite good for testing deck ideas and for testing out new things with the deck and getting used to deck and all that, but you have to remember that they don't take into account all real life factors that could affect a duel um, because obviously it's a simulator it doesn't it may be as realistic as it can be but it there will be a few things that it doesn't calculate that come into effect in real life so as I said that I think that one is good for it's obviously good for just getting an idea of the deck, feeling out the deck and everything, but I wouldn't use it all the time to test everything, to be honest with you. I'd rather do real life, because real life duels, obviously, you can actually interact with the player, players and everything. You can interact with your cards and actually see how it performs by holding the cards. With a computer, you're just clicking the mouse, basically. And, again, it takes into account real life factors that could affect a duel. Now, I can't really name any that have come to my head at the moment, but... Uh, one example I can give that I do remember was there was a we quite a while ago I added shrink to my deck two copies of shrink it worked really well on dual network but when it came to the real life duel it was absolutely terrible it really just didn't synergize with the deck very well at all so I took it out and I went for something else so that would be probably the second bit of the time advice Number three would be learning from your mistakes. Now, granted, in the heat of the moment in a duel, you can be vulnerable to making mistakes and getting rulings wrong and everything. It does happen. It can happen to anybody. We all learn from it. Sometimes you can make the same mistake twice or a few times, because, if, especially if you're not used to running a certain card or a certain deck. It does happen, but as soon, the sooner you learn from your mistakes, the better, and obviously you'll know to keep an eye out for that again. Um... Another thing about mistakes is don't assume effects of cards and everything. That's one of the easiest way I feel is it leads to make a mistake is assuming what the card does without re reading it first and confirming the effect first. Um, because there's been a few times where I've assumed some cards do some things and I've pro been proven wrong and it ended up costing me the duel or making me perform a move quite badly to say the least. Um, a common mistake I seem to make quite a bit, and I'm still learning about it because I'm still getting used to the card, is with Light and Darkness Dragon. Some people say that summoning Light and Darkness Dragon as soon as possible is the best way to stall and stop a duel because obviously you can stop the combos from going off. That's true in, a, in some sense, but at the same time it's also a good idea to keep it for when you actually really need it to stop certain combos going off and everything. Um, 
So it's kind of a balance act trying to find trying to find when is the best time to summon Light and Darkness Dragon to be honest. And I'm still learning about it. I still make mistakes. I still summon it out too early sometimes. I still summon it out maybe too late. It all depends really. Another good tip which I actually learned from the guys at um the guys at my local tournament is to always play or always try to play people who are better than you because obviously they've got more skill more experience and therefore they can pass their knowledge on to you. I'm constantly dueling against like um, Dave and Drew and John, um, Sandy and everybody from the tournament when I do get to go to them and everything. Um, constantly playing up against them because they're some of the top players in Scotland. I absolutely love playing against them. Even though I lose most of the time, I still gain experience, I still gain knowledge and I still gain um, wisdom on how to become better at the game. There's nothing wrong with playing with people who are on the same level as you or who are not as good as you. There's nothing wrong with that but I wouldn't do that all the time because obviously you don't gain because obviously if the person say is a new per is new to the game and they don't know how the deck works you may think you're gaining experience from being better than them but it's not really you're just getting a basic idea of how the deck works but if you go against more experienced players obviously you can actually see how fast the game goes and how to gain knowledge and how to gain wisdom and experience from that. Uh, another key thing that I think is really important in getting better in Yu-Gi-Oh is research. Now a lot of research. Now this is probably the archaeology side of me talking here but what I mean by research is that you keep up if you're especially if you're playing in the meta and the competitive side of dueling and everything but there's nothing wrong with fun players doing this as well is Obviously, finding out what decks are doing very well in the meta, what cards are really popular and very good as staples or tech cards for all decks, um, and checking out other Yuki tubers who are very experienced and everything as well. For example, um, I check like the Pojo Yu-Gi-Oh site nearly every day to see. Uh, to keep up with news and what cards are good and releases and stuff like that. Also with the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG Player or aka Meta, I think it was called Metagame.com, I could be wrong about that, it might be a separate site, I don't know. Um, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Wiki, just the general Yu-Gi-Oh! Wiki is quite a good place for doing research. If you want to get ideas for like decks, there's deck lists up there that can give you suggestions for decks and everything. Um, uh, but the Yu -Oh, like places like the Yu Gi Oh TCG Player and Metagame.com and all that, they're more specific for like the very competitive side. Whereas the Wiki, the Yu Gi Oh Wiki, in general, is just for just anything general that you want to find out. If you want to know the name of a card that you don't know, you just type it in the search and find it that way. And if you want to get ideas for some decks, you look it up on the Wiki and everything. Um, I also mentioned Yugi tubers. Yugi tubers who actually know their stuff are very good for research as well. Um, also, if you're, if you're subscribed to people like Mco40, Dragon Duelist Girl, or AKA Core TCG, um, your Yu-Gi-Oh channel, Dubk Dad One, all these kind of people who actually who know what they're talking about and are very good at the game and everything as well. Um, also, you can learn stuff from them because they often put up advice videos, ruling videos, and stuff on how to make yourself a better player. And I often turn to these kind of duelists as well for advice if I'm not in, if I'm unsure of what to do about certain things and that you know and that things. There's also the official Yu-Gi-Oh website, Yu-Gi-Oh.com. That's it's kind of very basic, I feel, but I still check it just to be on the safe side in case I need to get myself updated with anything. But there's also nothing wrong with asking the more experienced players at your um, locals as well. Um, for example, it, uh, Drew and Sandy and everybody were able to explain to me more specifically how chains work and how to... Um, and obviously when priority was still in effect, how priority worked and how it wasn't going to... how it changed and everything, and that's how I got my understanding of... Um, the priority in that back then when it was still in effect and everything. So doing a lot of research and keeping yourself up to date I think is also very key at getting better because obviously it means whether you're fun or a fun casual player or a competitive player, if you keep yourself up to date with what's going on then obviously you'll know what cards you're wanting to get from newer sets and everything that can benefit your deck regardless of what side you play on. It also means if you do go up against any more of the hardcore decks and more meta decks or other similar decks then obviously you'll know what will be in there and you'll know what common cards 
you can expect to come up against. Like most um, meta decks nowadays, you can expect nearly three Effect Veiler, two Max C, two Tour Guide, and Sangan. So as soon as you see those kind of cards come out, you know what's going to happen and you know what they're probably going to go into. Again, don't assume what they might go into with these cards. There's loads of combos with these cards, to be honest with you. But if you know like those, like those five cards, four or five cards are in nearly every meta deck known, then obviously you're, you can be a little bit more prepared for what happens when you do go up against them and adapt, hopefully, to the situation if they're used against you. Um, I don't think there's anything else I can say about this really. I think that's all the points I wanted to make um, for that. So, uh, just to quick re quickly rerun, is play with what you're comfortable with and you know. Test your deck as much as possible. A bit of online dueling doesn't hurt, but real life is much better because obviously you can see how the deck works much more efficiently. Um, learn from your mistakes as best you can, but remember you're... Um, the game's constantly changing and updating, so it's easy it's easy to get lost and make mistakes that way. But if the sooner you learn from them, the better. Play with people who are better and more experienced than you, because obviously they know the game inside out. You can actually gain more experience and gain their knowledge. And finally, a lot of do as much research as possible if you've got the time and energy to do so. Like checking up what's hot in the meta, what cards are most popular being counterproductive and everything, keeping up with Yugi tubers, good Yugi tubers who know what they're talking about, checking the official sites and everything, I would say would be um, would be my key points in getting better at Yu-Gi-Oh. Again, as I can remind you guys, it's not an overnight thing and it's definitely not a fairy godmother thing. Um, it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of experience. I've been playing this game for quite a long time. I was as you all know, I was a very casual player, but now I'm quite a competitive player, in some sense. Um, so, it, I've been playing this game for a very long time. I'm still learning a lot about it, to be honest, and I'm still getting better at it. And that reflects in the dual videos and my deck videos and everything of how my deck's evolving and all that. And I think the last important thing I want to say to you guys is pretty much never forget that your deck and yourself are always upgrading, they're always updating, and evolving together. The better you become, the better your deck becomes and vice versa. It just takes time, experience and patience to get there. So anyway guys, I hope this video helped you and I hope you enjoyed. So till the next video, take care and we'll see you later. Bye!